We are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another fantastic 
episode edition what do you whatever you want to call it i don't know but yes welcome to this show uh today we're gonna be doing a few things kind of multitasking here we're gonna be doing a quick and easy down and dirty review of this guy right here this is the profile 1.5 rda and once again autofocus just doesn't want to work with me but i'm sure you guys have seen the profile one this is the 1.5 uh, by, of course, Mr. Just Right One and Watofo. Before we get started with this, I do have to give a big shout out and thank you to Joel and Watofo for sending me a couple of these. Big shout out to them uh, as per usual. But yeah, let's take a quick vape break right off the bat and let's, uh, let's get this thing going. Well, there you go. I mean, as they say, the proof's in the pudding, and this thing has definitely got a lot going on, just like the original profile. Um, before we get too into this, I just wanted to point out that I really like the fact that Joel didn't call it the profile 2. Uh, he went with a 1.5, and that's something he insisted on. They wanted to call it the 2. He said, nah, let's call it the 1.5 and call it a day here, because let's face it, it's just kind of a reworking of the original, uh, improving, I suppose, on a few little minor things here and there. In my opinion, it is just as good, if not a little bit better than the original profile. Uh, I feel like some people are going to go for the original. Some people might like to go for this one. Uh, and if you are not wanting to wait any longer for a solid opinion of mine, I would say that if you want to go with any one of them between the two, if you like more airflow, go with the 1.5. If you like a little bit less airflow, then go with the 1. But either way you go, you're getting a really good, solid RDA. There you go. But yeah, and it is, yes, sitting on top of my BT Customs Squarius, this beautiful thing right here made of Juma wood. Uh, if you guys want to check one out, it's... Uh, BT Customs on Facebook. Make sure you check him out. Uh, he does some beautiful work in all types of different materials. So you can definitely give him a look. Uh, this is a, the 21700 version squonker that he makes. And it is gorgeous. Solid silver connection all the way around. Yeah, so we are going to take a quick up-close look at this. I didn't even bother bringing home the packaging for it because it's literally just the same exact thing as the one. I just wanted to give you guys a quick show and tell and give you an, a few opinions about this. But before we do any of that, let's go ahead and read chat here, see who we have uh, in chat. We've got Boodoo1013, massive shout out for getting here nice and early, fellow mass hole as well. We've got Flat Cap Vapor. Hitting the dab, doing the dab. There you go. We've got New Wave Dave. We've got Cassie Davis. We have Andy Summerfield. Good evening, good evening, good evening. We have Dion78, John Beninati. Uh, we've got Puddle Jumper84, Big Red Vapor Channel. Uh, let's see. I'm glad you guys were enjoying the tunes. For some reason, I can't output. Uh, I don't know. I, I'll figure it out. But I can't listen to the, the music as I'm uh, as I'm waiting. Uh, which sucks. I'll just go by the bars jumping on the screen. As soon as they go down to zero, I'm like, okay, hit it. Boom. But yeah, uh, I picked that music out like seconds before I hit the live button. This motherfucker here, an advocate for liberty. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see who else we have. For British eyes only. Uh, Stu Rep is in here as well. A couple more. Lethal Coils is watching. We've got... And that pretty much catches us up. So, yeah, big shout out to you guys. Thank you for watching. And let's get right into this. So, uh, yeah, as I said, this is by Watofo. It is by Mr. Just Right One. You guys know that guy. He's a really cool guy from Texas. And, God, autofocus, just work for me. Just please. Oh, oh you almost went there. There you go. So there's the profile logo. As you can see, we're going to go down to the close-up section in just a minute here. And I do have a... Uh, Jess Marie DHD tip on here. Get the face out of there. We have a, a Jess Marie DHD tip on there. You know what? You know what? Let's just go right down to it. Let's go down to the close-up view. <laughs> All right. So uh, 
I'm, it's not much to show off, really. Uh, so here, first of all, the DHD tip that's on there, it doesn't quite sit right. You know what? Let me try to... This is what I get for doing this on the fly, but uh, just adjust the focus manually a little bit. Do, 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 do. Doop. Let's see if we can get this. Oh, there he goes. So, yeah, let's just bring it right in here. Yeah, you guys love this stuff, don't you? Uh, right, right about there is a the focal point. So let's just go with that. Here we have the lovely DHD tip on top. As you can see, it doesn't quite fit right. doesn't always seat properly. You kind of can see the gap there a little bit. But it gets the job done, and it looks good doing it. So there you go. It is an 810 um, tip, so we can just... There we go. This one has the little uh, O-ring on it, which is probably part of the reason it doesn't fit quite right, because on the inside of here, you can see the O-ring. So this does have an O-ring on the inside of the lip of there. Uh, you can also, well, you can see right down into it, but uh, pretty much the same everywhere else in every other department. So you have this little airflow control right here, which kind of separates the airflow into two separate sections rather than just like uh, the, the other type of honeycomb that he had on the last one. Or was it, I think it was one row. So he just had like one row of holes on the last one. And then this one just switches it up a little tiny bit. Uh, it is squonkable, obviously. It's sitting on a squonker. Uh, let's just go ahead and take off the airflow control so I can show you that. Doop, doop, doop. Here we go. So there's the upper and lower airflow control, as you can see. It's not independently adjustable. However, you can shut off the top row and just have the bottom. Oh, why am I drifting? I'm just drifting away. Um, I'm trying to watch my screen as I do this, which is not easy to do. So you have uh, the top hole there, bottom there, and you can shut off the top while remaining open on the bottom, which is nice, but there's no single, not that you would need a single airflow. Uh, you can also use this thing with regular coils as well as mesh. Um, nothing much else to show. Nice little bevel. Is that what it's called? Chamfer? I don't know what you would call that. Like the, the you know, doming of the top there. It, it's rounded a little bit which provides really nice flavor, as well as, of course, the mesh. Here we have the mesh coil that's in there right now. I know it's a little bit dirty, but you know what? You can use these things for pretty much a year straight. Pretty sure you can get a year out of these little mesh strips. I don't know about you guys, but I've never actually popped one myself. It's always just been changing it up just to see the difference. But the cool thing about this is now they have different mesh strips that you can purchase for these. You can have, uh, there's uh, three different resistances and they're all a little bit different. The mesh, mesh texture is a little bit different on all three and gives you a slightly different vaping experience. Uh, this is a mechanical box mod, so it's, this one's nice and low. I think this is the 0.13 version and it gives you a really good hit. So there we go. And mesh, since it's mesh, it saves on battery life. I haven't changed this battery in like couple weeks probably um, but I also don't use it every day let's pop this back on there we'll show you the barrel section real quick obviously the profile logo which I think looks really cool there you go I'm glad I got this the stainless steel version because I just like how this logo pops out on there straighten out there you go and just show you a quick little roundabout <laughs> just picture hold music here do, 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 do. Do, do. all right anyways and here is the build deck they didn't do too much i really can't tell the difference between the old one and the new one too much on the deck they did a little bit of something in there to help the clamps out a little bit so it can grip onto those that piece of mesh a little bit nicer it's kind of weird that one side of my cotton looks dirtier than the other. Hmm. Interesting. You know, I have a theory about that, actually. It's the side that you face towards you. Like, the side that's closer to your body when you're vaping on it gets darker because the liquid kind of pools up on that one piece of cotton when you're vaping on it. I don't know. What do you guys think in chat? Let me know. 
But there is the build deck. I am not going to rebuild this. It's kind of pointless. It's just one screw on either side. It's it's not even really a worth building or rebuilding. Plus, I don't have any cotton here, so there's that. But pretty simple deck. The the Let's put it this way. The base of this deck looks almost identical to the original profile. So go back and watch that video if you want to see the uh, deck of that one. And that's really all there is to show. Uh, let's pop the cap back on, if we can. Oh, there it goes. And the bottom is about the same. A little bit messy down there. There you can see the bottom. Vaping with just, um, vaping with Mr. Just Right One. Profile and with Tofo logos all on the bottom. Yeah, it's a little bit, meh, a little gross. Oh well. That's what you get when you use your device a lot. You get a little bit of juice everywhere and you gotta clean it. R routine maintenance, guys. Routine maintenance. Uh oh. See, so, yeah, this tip does not like this, this device here, but it looks pretty good. So let's go back up to the main screen. That's pretty much all I've got to show you in this close up section here. So let's go back up the main screen. Yeah. And we'll check it out. What mod is that? that this is the Squarius mod from BT Customs. Check them out. Ooh. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do I'm going to just kind of give you a, a quick overview of the airflow and my opinions on it. So this is wide open, wide open airflow. Okay, nice and smooth, not a lot of whistle, plenty of airflow to go around, almost more than enough for this particular coil, but it's not bad. Bottom airflow only, you do get a little bit of restriction. Again, it's not too much restriction. It's, it's, it's not bad. I can definitely see that the people that like that little bit of restriction are gonna like the bottom airflow only. But then again, why would you buy the Profile 1.5 if you like the slightly restricted airflow? I mean, not, not saying that the original Profile was any you know, sort of restricted, that like, like it's mouth to lung or anything, but it's enough to just just notice it. And then let's now just kind of, uh, let's see, I could do kind of a half and half here. I could do like just three holes top and bottom. I really like this airflow system because it's very, very customizable. You can have half the holes open on both the top and bottom. You can have half the holes open with the top closed and it, it's very customizable. So yeah, so Basically, with just the side holes closed off, you get a little bit more of a whistle. It's not terrible. It's not bad whatsoever, but it's definitely noticeable. Um, as for flavor, I get excellent flavor off of this thing. I would put this probably top five, if not top three, in the flavor department for RDAs. I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know about your guys' opinion about that, but... I really think this thing has tremendous flavor. Uh, it's hard to beat a mesh RDA that is that actually works. Um, you know, comparing this to some of you know the other ones that are out there. One of my other favorite mesh RDAs that was around a little bit before this one was the Vape Fly. I think it's called Pro Mesh or something like that. Uh, that one was stellar for me. I really liked it. This one basically takes that and drops the deck down lower and then provides the airflow to kind of just ride over the top of that coil and, and it basically hits every little spot on the coil, which is just awesome. So uh, I think Joel did a hell of a job with this thing. I really do enjoy it. You can probably pick one of these things up for 30 bucks nowadays. I mean, yeah, it's definitely been out for a few months. Um, I wasn't even gonna do a video on it, but I felt like, you know what, it, I need to do this thing justice and uh, tell a few more people that might not have heard about it otherwise about it because I think it is an excellent device. Um, let's see, I'll, I'll take a few questions now if you guys have any questions. 
go ahead and throw them in chat. Let's see. Looks like a well-made RDA. Solid. Yes, definitely solid. I like the, the thickness of the cap, too. Feels good. Feels really good when you put the cap on there. Has a little locking mechanism so the cap doesn't move left to right. And you can take a, take it off your device without just spinning the cap. Love that. Um, do 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 do. Let's see. Throw a big bore alien in there. Um, eventually I probably will throw a single coil alien in there. I need some uh, for British eyes only coils. That's or or, or lethal coils. Either one of those two. <laughs> I need like a, a four millimeter big ass like chunky alien to throw in this thing. Maybe triple 26 or something. That would be pretty cool. Single coil. Uh, do you put the wick in place before the mesh or vice versa? So the way I build this thing, uh, for those of you that don't know, is I just take an entire like piece of either cotton bacon or native wicks or whatever I'm using. And I clamp one side of the mesh throw the cotton bacon or whatever in there, fold the mesh over it, and then screw it in. And yeah, you can use the little thing that it comes in the box. It's a tool that kind of rounds out the mesh. Uh, you can use that, but you're gonna just kind of bend it back a little bit while you throw your cotton in there. I don't pre-fire it, I don't do any of that. I literally just clamp one side, fold, clamp, drip and vape, good to go. Uh, I really don't feel like mesh is necessary to pre-fire, because Unlike round wire coils, it's very difficult, uh, like, because, you know, you, they call them contact coils. When contact coils are squished together, you get those little hot spots letting that ele the electricity kind of jump across the coil. With mesh, it's one heating element. It's stamped out of one piece of metal. It just goes over the side, positive to negative. So there's really no need to fuss around with the mesh. You literally just fold it over, drip and vape. So we, super, super easy. Oh, let's see, Ryan, he needs a whistle, and you're better than, better at it than I am. I need a whistle? Who needs a whistle? Um, let's see, mesh has great flavor, but the dry hits are hell. Yes, absolutely. Make sure you don't let mesh go dry. Pretty simple. Make sure you don't let any coil go dry. Every coil deserves to be moistened. There, I'm sorry if I, I said the M word for any ladies watching, and... That have a, a, you know that take offense to that. Uh, let's see. How hard's wicking? Pfft, easy. Pfft, one of the easiest things to wick I've ever wicked in my life. Um, now there's two. There's a two different profiles, right? There's the uh, tank and the RDA. So with the tank. You have to do it a certain way. You have to cut it at 45 degree angles this way, like, uh, what is that, trapezoid? I believe that's what it's called. Um, with this one, I do it the opposite. So I make a uh, flipped upside down trapezoid. And with that, I just kind of tuck those little tails in at the, the base. And then usually what I do is once I, I wet the whole coil down, I'll take something and just kind of push right in the middle of the coil on both sides. I'll just push like a pin in so it's like really, really packed into the center of that coil uh, or mesh piece. So you just do your normal like wicking, tuck the, the tails in, and then just have something to poke it and just poke the cotton in the very center, like where it, just kind of eyeball it and just poke it right in where you think the center of that uh, radius is. So. Uh, don't let a coil go thirsty. Yes, absolutely. Um, and what's up, Chris, a.k.a. Tuna? How are you doing? Doesn't pre-firing make an oxidation layer, though? Yes, but that's why you pre-fire contact coils, because you need that oxidation to go through. Uh, Canthal, and to the best of my knowledge, nichrome doesn't actually rust. It's It doesn't rust up you know if it's left out in the open so i really don't worry about anything happening to my coils when i just leave them like i, I probably haven't touched this thing for at least four or five days um so during that time span the coil's just been sitting there and i literally just picked it up juiced it and vaped all right so 
it's almost halfway through and I still have a lot to talk about. So let's just move right on and we'll go and take a look at what is in this package. Actually, you know what? Before we start, I'm going to take out... Eh, take out the invoice. I'm just going to do it right here. And push that up there. So, we have a DHL bag from China. And I got the knife. Eh, stab it through. There you go. Nice and easy. No addresses? Okay, good. No addresses. So that's another one from our friends over at Vaporesso. Gotta love those guys over at Vaporesso. This one, this one doesn't have my name on it. Eh, it's okay. They're organized. They don't need my name on it. Not that, like, you know, seeing my name on a box does anything. I'd really like to see my name on a mod, but maybe I can make it happen. <laughs> All right, well, let's see what we got here. Packing material. Wait, is there anything in there? No. <laughs> Literally, they sent me these. Well, hey, they want me to stay safe. And that's what a lot of Chinese companies are doing right now, you guys. If you don't see any new vape gear, if you don't see anything new coming out from Smoke or Vapresso or, you know, any of the other big companies out there, it's because they're making masks. And a lot of them, even American companies, are going to be making masks and all sorts of medical supplies too pretty soon because of what's going on in the world, COVID-19. I'm not going to put one on. I'm just going to leave them over there. But let's see, we have, ooh, here we go. How's that? That's pretty darn cool. I like the colors. A little weighty, a little bit weighty. I don't mind. So we have Unipod. I, are these for, no, this, Ryan, uh, that's, is that for that or is it for something else? I don't know. You seem to be in the know about this stuff. Uh, they sent me a couple packs of pods, and they would, wouldn't you know, they sent me two of these devices. So, uh, vote in chat right now for which one I should open and which one is going to the patrons. By the way, giveaways are happening now, again, over on Patreon. So, hey, if you guys want to get in, in on that, link's right down there in the description. Uh, name on a mod is easy <laughs> if I have a Sharpie, yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah, uh, vote in the chat for which color I should open. Cotton candy or what is this one? Gray, re they call it gray resin? They call this one gray resin apparently. And this one is called silver resin. Hmm, very unimaginative names there, Vapresso. I would have called this one cotton candy. This one would have been, I don't know, something cool like lava or I don't know. Ink and blood. There you go. <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay. Okay. Which one should I open? That's the, the question. Red or blue? Open the pretty one. Uh, I got a couple reds. Ooh. I think blue is starting to win. We're, we're going red and blue on this one. Oh, blue's winning. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Get those votes in. Uh, but yeah, that's all that's in the box here. So I'm going to just check it off to the side. There you go. Yeah, these pods are definitely for, for this thing. So whoever wins one of these gets a pack of pods with it. Oh, cotton candies went in. Mm, open the blue and show it to Stan. Ah, that's true. Stan would probably be jealous. And it would match this thing. But the black with the black and red. Ooh, that looks so nice. I don't know. All right. Everyone says blue. I'm going to open blue. That's happening. Oh, it's got an easy strip. Oh, okay. Sorry, knife. You get to go away unused. Sorry. Causing a big mess all around my room. 
And you know, the, the blue goes really nicely with the, uh, the masks. All right, let's see what I got for juice. Oh wow, this thing is kind of weighty for a pod system kind of thing. It definitely has a good feel to it. And look at that chrome, shiny, shiny. That's pretty neat. Man, micro USB though. I really, really need all of the vape companies to jump on board with USB-C. That way I could get a ton of free USB-C uh, cables. All right, what do I have for juice? I have mm, chilled berries. Eh, I could do some chilled berries. Mm, or do I want papaya? I've been really digging that papaya. What is it? I don't even remember. Papaya, mango, and cantaloupe. So that's what I'm going to throw in this thing right quick. Oh, oh, little sticker. These uh, little rubber pieces here, the little silicone pieces, are definitely improving, though. Slowly but surely, they're imp Oh, I said that too soon. It's just a flap, so now you have to kind of, like, nudge it out of the way. I'm colorblind, so the gray one. Oh. <laughs> it's not how colorblind works. Unless you're a dog. Don't answer that. All right. We're going to fill up the pod. We're going to give this one a minute to soak in here because that's what you should do, guys. Never just vape a pod straight away. Let it soak for a minute. I don't think there's anything else on here. It looks like there's a light. And there's a button on the bottom. That's kind of interesting. So, But we're going to let that one sit for a second here. We're going to take a couple of puffs, we're going to read some chat, and then we're going to get on to some old school vape gear. I have all of my old school vape stuff that I drug up from the basement, and uh, we're going to take a look at it. We're just going to go through, I really honestly can't remember what was down there, so I'm just going to kind of pick and choose things that I've been... Uh, that I've used in the past, I guess. So let's go ahead and have a couple of puffs here. Any questions in chat, just throw it on up and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll read it for you. I don't know. Words. Ugh. And I haven't had anything to drink today either, so there's that. I have a cat friend over here. Yeah. She's watching the birds outside. Okay, she doesn't want to be on camera today, though. Oh, yeah, get, everyone get your retro vapes out. We've been talking about it a lot lately. Vape history. You guys asked for it. You got it. We're going to do some vape history today. I can tell you some stories. Would you rather me tell you stories about the vapes I have, or would you rather learn about the history of them and, you know, all that good stuff? And, and you know, what was cool during that time that whatever device uh, I pick, I've lost my train of thought. Whatever was cool. Um, let's see. Red looks great to you, New Wave Dave. Really? That's crazy. That's kind of rare because usually it works like red looks green and blue looks yellow or something like that. I've seen, I've been seeing that a lot. Uh, I didn't know that people could be individually colorblind. I apologize. I didn't mean, didn't mean to offend you or anything, dude. Um, I thought you were saying how, like, you know, dogs can only see gray. <laughs> cat, what cat? Oh, confetti? No. Come here. Confetti? Come here. She's going to hate me for this. Confetti. Say hi. Oh, yeah. Nope. Does not want to be on camera today. Oh, there she is. Hi, kitty. Hi. All right, go play with the birds. Now she's like, oh, now I'm on your lap. Now it's lap time. No, get off. <coughs> yeah, that's confetti. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, yeah, let's go ahead and take a puff on this thing here. That's another thing you could do. Cover the air hole and go like that. 
Yeah, I just got juice in my mouth. That's how you know it's ready to go. All right. Hmm. Oh, five clicks turns it on. It has a little, God, you were trying to focus. Uh, I'm guessing three clicks changes power. One, two, three. One, two, three. That can't be a button, right? Yeah, it's automatic draw. It's like, it's hard. It's a very loose airflow. I, I struggle with the, uh, the looser airflow pods. It says mesh unipod. That's interesting. Do, do, do. It's 0.8 ohms. I think these are the same, right? Let's see. Yeah, both the same. I'm imagining that it's kind of meant for either or mouth to lung or direct to lung. This hits really hard. Um, I'm wondering. I'm wondering what the button is for other than on and off. Can I hit it like that? No, it doesn't do anything. I wonder if I hold it. Nope, just shows the light. Maybe that's battery life. I don't know. Oh, the outside has kind of a weird texture. Not super weird. I don't know if you guys remember. I, I don't think anyone watched that stupid <laughs> that video of mine where it was that little teeny tiny uh, pod system. Not pod system. It's like a cylindrical one, though. Um, but it had this texture on the outside that when you run your finger across it, you can feel the ridges. And I hated it. It's it's really It was really thin. So like you could like run your fingers up and down it, and it just felt like... I don't know. For me, it just felt like nails on a chalkboard. I just couldn't stand it. So I was just like, eh, eh, we'll just vape on it like real quick. Eh, I just hated using it because of the texture. But this one here, it's just kind of, I don't know, kind of different. But it's not bad. It's not that something that makes me cringe, though. That's good. But, um, yeah. That's not bad. It's nice little, nice shape. I mean, it's not like the zero. The zero is kind of my baseline of comparison. Um, but it's not a, a bad little device. I wonder what kind of battery that is. I wonder if that's like a 14500 or I wonder if that's just a double A in there, rechargeable double A. Hmm. I guess we'll find out. But yeah, it's very warm, very warm vape. That's for sure. I'm doing it direct to lung. <coughs> Let's try to do it mouth to lung. <coughs> it's a little too warm for mouth to lung for me. Maybe a quick one. Not quite a 3D printed texture, Jenny. Not quite, it just kind of feels I don't know. Feels like a sticker or like they almost tried to make it padded. That's what it feels like. Yeah, because when you put your finger in it, it leaves an imprint. So it's kind of like, like a gym mat. <laughs> that's a weird thing to say, but yeah, that's what it reminds me of. Frank, I don't know. Uh, do Let's see, 900 milliamp hour battery. So it's a fairly small battery. It's pretty tiny, um, but we shall see how long it lasts. Not bad, good, good rip off of it though. That's for sure. Okay, so you get a, there's a 0.8 ohm unipod and a 1.2 ohm unipod. The 0.8 is mesh. The 1.2 seems to be not mesh. So, for everyone out there, that is gonna be the difference between the direct lung and the mouth lung. 
Seamus Wright 37, thank you so much for the super chat. He says, here you go, man. Much appreciated. Big shout out to you. And uh, yeah, this thing is pretty good so far. We'll, we'll get down to it when we do the full review in, in a couple weeks' time. Memory foam padding. Uh, and it's dead. <laughs> all right, all right. But moving on, let's talk about some old school vape gear. Again, no clue. What's what I have to show you guys? I have my whole like I have this. Uh... Oh, this like little drawer set here with all my old stickers on it. Yeah, bunch of random stuff. So let's go through the, the drawers first. All right. Well, here's something. Oh, God, I got an old juice on me. That's like 10 year old juice. So I have a whole bunch of drip tips. Mostly 510 drip tips, actually, if, by the looks of it. I got some chuff caps in there. I remember my chuff caps, they used to come from a company called Fusion Mods. That was pretty cool when he used to make me all sorts of custom chuff caps. But yeah, before the days of 810 thread, uh, 810 tips, we had these. They were called chuff caps, or we called them chuff caps, even though chuff caps is a, a brand name. But, you know, it's like it's like calling it Kleenex. Focus and there you go. So it's literally just a full blown replacement. You had that your your 22 millimeter barrel. And then this just, you take off the whole top cap and you just went, and then this was your tip. And it's pretty much 810 dimensions. Uh, any interesting ones in here? I got a couple Kennedy tips. I have this one. This one is a gigantic one. This was for a Tobe, T-O-B-H, clone. And it's just this massive, massive 30 millimeter mouthpiece for it. Look at the bore down that thing. Um, I have this one, which is really interesting. This one has a little carb in it. You can see the hole in the, the side of the drip tip there. That is basically like a carb. It's adjustable airflow for your drip tip. The Atlantis II had something similar built into the device. This one here, you could just replace any 510 tip with a little carb, add some air into your hit, make it a little bit looser, and that's how you get bigger clouds. Um couple of like cheapo generic ones that I got from China. Uh, oh, here's kind of an interesting one. This is like a muffler tip. That's what they used to call that one. You know, you have your classic pawn style and their Ming, Ming style. I remember that Ming vase style tips right there. A lot of metal tips. I hated metal tips though, so I never used them couple random acrylic ones and I thought I had a glow in the dark one somewhere probably do but yeah nothing I mean there's this one this came off of some sort of clone of a popular atomizer from the time eight years ago and uh, yeah that's about it for those tips nothing super special in there carry on let's carry on here Oh, cat wants to go out. All right, here, here, I'll let the cat out. And then we will talk about what's in this one. So this drawer has my very first, or one of the very first e-cigarettes I've ever purchased. This is a Volcano e-cigs magma device. It's a 510 thread battery with just a button on it. And I wonder if they still work. Oh, they're very dead. Bet you it would work, though. Do I have an auto-draw one in here? No, there's another button-draw one. I, I bet money I could charge one of these suckers up and it would work. Oh, this one's an auto-draw. Yeah. Dead, too. Everything's dead. Oh, Oh well, but yeah, those are my first batteries. Most people would call those batteries for cartridges nowadays, if you know what I mean. For uh, for my fellow mass holes out there, or anyone in Colorado or 
any any of the other legal states. Uh, let's see what's in this one. Okay, yeah. Bunch of random stuff. So I have, ooh, wow, that's a freaking thick cap. This is, oh, God. This one's a Poor Boy Customs cap for a rig, uh, a rig atomizer. What is it called? Roughneck. Um, this is like a comp cap. As you can see, it's brass and it's very, very, very tarnished. It had a like a built-in pressure fit, uh, or like kind of they, they just mashed them in there. Uh, tip on it, and you know these were sold. These these probably were like 60, 70 bucks back in the day. It's a big chunk of brass. I have a some sort of clone Patriot RDA here. I don't even think it has a logo on it. Yeah. Not even a logo, but uh, you can see that the size of the airflow hole that we used to have to deal with, that's what, about one and a half millimeters maybe? <laughs> and if you think that's bad, the silica wicked coils that came in these things when they were clones were just god awful. Uh, this is definitely a clone. This is a clone cartel mods Stellaire. Kind of the goon before the goon existed, if I would say any, if I had to say so. Um, yeah, in my opinion, this is like the goon before the goon existed. Uh, but yeah, simple little three post design. Here, let me take the cap all the way off. That would help. Boom. Yeah, three post design. Uh, nothing much to show off on this one here. It's literally just three holes and three posts. But that's the post hole size we have to we used to have to deal with, with a like single O ring, no cap locking mechanisms, no nothing. Yeah, definitely a cheapo clone there. Here we have a Vulcan RDA. Yeah, you can go back and watch videos when I actually reviewed this thing. You can see my review of it. Now this is like, look at those fins, man. Those uh, heat sink fins. This thing was all about the heat sinks. And I heard they, I think they came out with a, a version two of it. This one was kind of interesting. Oh God, if I can even get the cap off. Ah, there we go. Uh, this one was kind of interesting because it had like knurled screw heads. Come on, just block my face out. Focus. You can kind of, yeah, there you go. You can see the deck a little bit better there. Raised center post, knurled, screw heads and they're not just the generic Chinese cheapo ones the nice red o-rings but look at the position of the negative posts and the the walls on this thing it just doesn't make much sense because your your cotton is going to be jammed in there so not a they had a lot of good ideas but just not a, a good execution on it so oh well they tried and then I have this guy in here that for some reason, Segeli 30 watt. Here's the 30 watt legend. And yeah, it's it's the legend, kind of like the one I showed off the other day, but this is the 30 watt version. And I have a random old ass Kanger coil with no wicking in it. <laughs> and a drip tip, a crappy drip tip. All right, let's see. Oh God, this thing, utter fail in my opinion. This is a Ego C cartomizer where you had to like press the cartridge into it and it would puncture it. it it's the weirdest thing, man. This thing was junk though. I hated it so much. So I was trying to look for something better, but nothing better ever came. Okay, this is gonna get you the nostalgia you were looking for. This is a CE4 atomizer, pre-wicked cartridges that you use up until they're bad and then you throw the whole thing out. You see that silica wick in there? Oh yes. Once these things got like a third of the way down, it was just useless. It never wicked properly for me. You fill it up top here. Soup. Yeah. This will bring back a lot of memories for a lot of old school vapors in chat right now with the CE4. The good old days. And then I have some sort of 
random ego thread adapter. I don't know. It just has ego threads on one side. I don't know what that was for. Oh, it doesn't seem to do anything else. I got a bunch of plastic bottles. I'm not even going to show you guys because they're just plastic bottles. A lot of parts. This is what you had. You had parts. You had all sorts of screws and O-rings and screwdrivers and little little pieces of silica wick. Yeah. Uh, you had little blue screwdrivers. I'm pretty sure every single old school vapor has two dozen of these. And what else do we have in here? Some thread adapters, some O-rings, some screws, some bunch of random crap. The middle thread to my Nemesis clone from ages ago that I had to scratch off the, uh, the fake gold coating. Yeah, I think it was a piece of crap. But you always ended up with spare parts. I had something else. Oh, wait. Where is it? Where is it? Thought I had something in here that was cool. Oh, maybe not. All right, we'll put that back. Uh, what are these? Ooh, here we go. Here's some old gems. My rig mods, original rig mods. Rig V1. This is a nickel-plated V1. As you can see, it's in rough shape. I actually bought it in similar condition because it was only 75 bucks. And when I actually, the box is signed by James, rest in peace. And uh, I actually asked James when I met him at a convention, I said, hey, I got this thing. Is it, would it devalue it if I stripped it and re-nickel plated it and recoded it? He goes, no, because that's exactly what we would do. So someday I will get this thing re-nickel plated into, you know, perfect condition again. And I'll uh, have a really, really, really nice... Oh, God, look at that. Oh, it's probably four or five years old right there. Oh. Ooh. I don't even want to think about it. But, yeah. Uh, one day I'll get it re-nickel plated and I'll have a really nice limited edition rig. And here is an unfired rig. I've never, never put a build in this Roughneck. And this rig mod is brand spanking new. Couple scrapes on it though. Well, maybe not. No, it's just surface stuff. It's just a little fluff and dirt. Not dirt, but you know, dust and stuff on there. But yeah, this is a mint condition rig and roughneck combo, unfired. Wonder if that would get anything these days. Probably not. Vape it now. No, absolutely not. Definitely not vaping it. Uh, let's see. Oh my God. <laughs> I have the, uh, the keys. Oh no. Cree Z. That's what it is. Cree Z. I'm sure you guys have probably seen either my video or Grim Green's video on this thing from back in the day. Yeah. Looks kind of like a flask, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't know. It still has juice in it. I'm not vaping it. Mm -mm -mm. No, no, no. This thing was... I hated this battery door, too. It seemed, like, super duper cheap. It used, like, a camera battery-looking thing. I don't trust that. It's probably only, like... F I'm, I was going to say four amps, and I thought that was too much. So that's how bad it is. And then I have this guy right here. The Evic V... VT, VT, and this one was, I think, the first thing that I ever got that I, that I bleh, that I ever received that said sample not for sale, and I was so stoked about it. I'm like, oh my god, you guys, it's a sample. No one can have this one. I will have the only one of this device that says sample, or you know, all the reviewers will, but you know, I didn't think about that. Here, this is really what I want to show you. This. All right, can anyone tell me what this is in chat? Do, 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 Okay, so I hope you guys all have your answers in chat. 
because I'll tell you what this is. See that little point? Ooh, see that point right there? This is a Cardo Punch. Now, a Cardo Punch, you had to actually have a cardamizer, which is a little atomizer, wicking material, all in one little cylinder thing. And you have to screw it down, and it just would push a hole through the Cardo so that you could put it inside a glass tank and vape on it. So, yeah. It's just ridiculous that we had to go through all that trouble. Nowadays, you guys have pre-made coils, and you just throw them in and juice them up, and you're just off vaping. That's what we had to deal with back in the day. Our Cardos weren't even ready to vape, even if we purchased them. Let's see. We've got, oh, Council of Vapor, serial number 46. Whatever this is, I can't remember the names of them, but a little, little tank. There you go, sub ohm tank. Might might be a sub ohm tank. Stratos. There you go. Have some really old wire in here. Some really old cotton bacon with the shiny bags. Some Mad Rabbit. Some kidney puncher. This will last me forever. This is 24 gauge. Looks like 24. I have a Kennedy top cap with the 22 millimeter, or not 22, the, uh, I think this is a 22 millimeter top cap, but with the, uh, the old school 510. And the only other thing of note in here would be this guy, which this is called the Smart Vape. This is a Bluetooth controlled vape. You literally have to set the settings on some Bluetooth device. You, there's no other buttons. There's literally just one button on there, and you set the settings on your phone or something. This thing is a cheap piece of crap. <laughs> I never really liked it. My one of my uh, my old boss, he thought that thing was the coolest thing in the world, and I was like, no, that it's no, absolutely not. All right, really quick, I'm gonna go through these. Ego One Tank. Uh, let's see. This is a what is this? Pro Tank 2? Pro Tank 2? I think that's what this one was. The rounded top. 510 Pro Tank 2. Anybody? Kanga? Oh, Joy, I Joy Tornado. I really like this one. I built a quad Clapton coil in it. There's a video on it. You can go check that out. But yeah, built a quad Clapton coil in the I Joy Tornado. And it wasn't bad. I've got a. UDCT. This is a apparently a dual coil tank for some reason, and it has a it's cardo tank. Yeah, you literally just had to slide this over a punched cardo and fill it up. It's crazy. I uh, don't even remember what this one is called, but there you go. As you can see, it's foggy AF. It looks like a level. Looks like a bubble level. And then this is my first ever like thing I was really cool, like psyched about. This is a Finiac glass tank. It's a custom, not custom, but you know, sort of rare thing uh, with metal top and bottom caps, super solid O-rings. Uh, uh. And uh, it came in a little, oh God, little, little bag. <laughs> but they used to have, it's like a blast glowing, uh, glass blowing company that made it and they make all sorts of like pipes and bongs and stuff too i thought that was kind of funny but yeah that's that drawer almost done with this one guys uh, i have a few more things after this oh god oh wow okay shit this oh almost dropped it this is a what k fun four this is like after i started getting into sub ohming and Everyone's like, oh, Svomestro is like the kingpin of mouth to lung. And I had to give it a try. And it was pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. People say like K-Fun Lite and all that are like way better. I haven't tried a K-Fun since that one. And I never got into K-Funs before that one. So there you go. This is an old knockoff Ego battery. Again, one of those things that you would put a Cardo on nowadays. But yes, as you can see... We've had those before, and wouldn't you know it, we have a Halo one. This is the, the version made by a company called Halo. They made a proprietary threaded version for 
their own purposes. They, they made these starter kits. Um, and they gave a bunch away, which is cool. And it almost makes up for the fact that they have proprietary threads and you can't put anything besides their pre-filled or uh, their tanks on it. Oh, here's some really old batteries. Let's see. 317.16. So that's it. That's, yeah, four, four years old. Here is an AW battery. This is the type of battery we used to use back in the day. This is a thing you would use in a RC car or something, but 3100 milliamp hour 18650. This thing was the tits back way back when. And check this out. It has little bumps on the negative terminal. It's weird. But it is a flat top. And we have an MNKE. Yeah, who remembers these big badass guys right here? Big old orange 26650. Uh-oh. Now you don't want to go in? What have I done to upset you? Well, this thing's just being a pain. All right. Let's see. Only a couple more things to show off. A couple more tanks in here. Here is another Council of Vapor tank. This is called the Typhoon. I believe this one was switchable mouth-to-lung. No, I think it's, this was their mouth-to-lung tank that took uh, Nautilus coils. Which is awesome, except as you can see, I think it leaked. Oh, we've got a pro tank. Oh, here's a pro tank too. No, this is a pro tank too. So this is a pro tank too with a little top like that. So I don't know what that other one was. Yeah, that's a pro tank too. Uh, this is a. God, I don't, this is a Pro Tank Mini. Yeah, I used to love the Pro Tanks. All of us in uh, the New England Vapors group, we used to love the Pro Tanks. Here is an Aero Tank with the airflow completely seized up on it. The knurls and everything right there. You can see the airflow is all the way closed and it just seized up. So I'm like, okay, well, guess that one's done. And we have an old school Mini Nautilus. Oh, oh, there you go. So I used to really dig mouth to lung, but just lately haven't been able to get back into it. Yeah, a thousand dollars worth of gear now worth a buck, if that. God, it deserves to be in the trash, but I don't know. I keep it around for nostalgia. All right. Oh, I got a big bag of stuff here. Yeah, original Pro Tank was one piece, so I don't know what that one was, because it had the... Oh, you know what this was? This is the David. I think that's what it's called. It's called the David Tank. Good Lord. Yeah, any vape David. Holy crap. That's what that one was. And it used the BVC coils, the Aspire BVC coils. I've got a box for a Griffin tank. There you go. box for some sort of clone. Uh, a Segeli telescope in its original wrapper. I'm not even going to bother taking it out. It's a really cheesy, cheesy mech mod that goes bigger if you want a different battery. I wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole, even back then. Rig pig box. Uh, Rig V2 box, a Tesla box with no guts inside, or actually, yeah, there's no contacts. <laughs> Tesla box that I was supposed to have made into an, a mod, but no one ever did it. Uh, I've got my original Atlantis tank on top of my custom painted Chrysler Green uh, IPV Mini V2. Oh, it's got a big old chip out of it, though. <laughs> Poop. Here it is. Here's the Panzer Black Hawk. As you can see, it's more of like a Gray Hawk nowadays. This is the real deal. The real thing with the reverse threaded... Um, reverse threaded... Um, what? 
safety thing on there. Switch lock, whatever you want to call it. There you go. That was that was a good one for back in the day. Oh, oh God, here's a dirt and hair covered Russian 91%. Who remembers that? Social distance that telescope. Amazing. I showed you guys the 722 the other day, the Provari the other day, uh, this that Sigeli the other day. I'm trying to find some good stuff in here. This is, uh, oh my god, I forget what this one's called, but it had lights that looked like, uh, it reminded me of Daft Punk. Three different colors for three different settings. Some random, not a one-off, but you know, real short run kind of thing. This is an iPure hybrid. Ooh, yeah. Genesis tank. Let's see if it's still built. It is still built. Look at that. It has a little mesh wick in there and everything. There you go. For anyone that remembers Genesis tanks, you're old. I've got my original first mech mod the cheapo nemesis clone it was the vapor ev edition which had the gold bands it actually made it inoperable that's awesome oh yeah here's i got a tugboat in this run it was number four serial number four i uh, can barely make it out ah let's see there you go serial number four tugboat they took it out of the case when they were supposed to just grab one off the shelf behind them. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, I've got this monstrosity. What is this? Cloud Kicker Society? Something like that. Uh, I forget the name. No, it's Ether. Yeah, EtherTech and CKS ECC Edition. Whatever this was, the same people. This was the same people that made the. Plume Veil. Plume Veil made this one, but this is a clone. Um, Ego, I, I, I go W4. 14? 14. Apparently 14. Wow. The horrible worst RDA in the history of RDAs, and I'll show you why. Ooh, if I can get it open. Wait a minute. <gasps> no, this has got to be opened. This has got to be opened. I thought it was mint for a second. Uh, let's see. Got to wrap this up pretty soon, but yeah. Oh my God, this thing is a piece of crap. Got to throw it on here. How bad is this triggering your guys' nostalgia right now? Wait, was this a threaded cap too? No, no way. Worst RDA ever! Oh my god, this thing was just a piece of crap. Airflow, it has triple airflow. It has triple airflow. Let me see if I can show you. One, two, three. Three airflows and two coils. Tell me how you're going to get even airflow with this thing. Never going to happen. And therefore, it goes back in the box, never to be seen again by human eyes. This thing was the biggest piece of crap. I felt bad for bashing Anakin, but they just, they had a slew of products at one time that were just bad. They were god awful. Oh, and I broke the, <laughs> I broke the uh, little bands on it too. You know what? God, I'm keeping it just to show people how bad it is in the future. Just like, never, ever, 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 ever make your RDA like this. Not that anyone would anymore, but you know what I mean. Just as a reminder. Let's see. A few little things left in here. Old juice box. Here's some zero milligram from way back in the day. Uh, the hammer mod I showed you the other day. So not even going to show that. Oh, God. I don't even know what this is, but it's called the X-Pure RDA. Look, looks like a piece of junk to me. Let 
Ugh. Threaded? What? Ceramic deck. Wait, can I... Can I... wonder if you could use this for, like, shatter or something like that. Ceramic deck. Yeah, whose idea was that? Really? Everything had its own gimmick way back in the day. Kennedy cap. There's a lot of beard hair in here too. No surprise there, right? Am I am I right? Fogger V4, I want to say. Fogger V4. It's hard to see. But yeah. Little teeny tiny clamps on that thing. Not even clamps, just Wait, that's the Russian. I'm trying to take stuff out here. Uh, here's the Smoke Z-Max, or Smock, depending on how you pronounce it. I've showed this off a few times before, but yes, Smock has made a tube mod a long time ago. There it is. Ta-da! And it's basically just a clone of the Provari. Or per is it Provari or Provari? I've always called it Provari because everyone else called it that. And I was like, oh, okay. I go W. Look at that. Old school I go W. Oh, God. An iClear. iClear XI. What was that 11? I don't even know. Here's my extension cap for my Provari. I have my Vox edition. Oh, this is the Vox Veil. They called it a Vox Veil because they didn't want to step on toes for Plume Veil. But yes, this is a Plume Veil clone. Yeah. Nothing nothing to write home about, to be honest. Oh, God. This is the second worst atomizer ever. This is from Sigeli. <sighs> this thing is the most ugliest thing I've ever seen. Oh, my God. They tried so hard to be real cool about it, and they just failed. Like, yeah, check this thing out. Uh, forget what this is a clone of, but there you go. Another little RDA. Here's a big, gigantic UD Igo W. That's what we looked at the box for, the 14. Massive 30 millimeter. Ah, yes, my first mutation. The OG. Oh, that's kind of weird. Oh, God, that drip tip is nasty. Oh, oh. Mutation. I'm sure a lot of you have that one. This is called the Cat Dripper. This was, a like, I want to say, like, meant to be a quad coil, but it just, it was so hard to build. But there you go, there's the cat. I think it's from the same people that made the turtle ship mod. Kind of capitalizing on that. Here's an original Pro Tank. There we go. The OG Pro Tank. Yeah. <laughs> oh, more beard hair. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, a real obvious Patriot ripoff. Everyone cloned the Patriot back in the day. This is just such a cool looking RDA. And now I have an authentic. Oh, only a few more little things in the bottom here. Looks like... Oh. There's a cap. Oh, yeah. A quad airflow cap for a Patriot that I don't think I ever used. And the tops, the original tops for the 510 connection. Boom, for the rig mods. That's pretty much everything I could find today. I have more. I guarantee you I have a whole other like box full somewhere. But maybe we'll do a part two. Let me know if you guys want me to do a like little part two of reminiscing about old vape gear. And I'll bust out some of the old stuff. And if you guys have any questions about anything you saw, please leave them. I'll, I'll be going through chat and doing some more shout outs real quick before we go here. Um, but I just think it's really cool to just take a look back every once in a while and just kind of realize how far along we've came and 
you know, be grateful and thankful for the advances in technology because I'm just glad we're not stuck with all the stuff we were stuck with back then. I'm just going to throw this all back in the bag and away it goes back to the basement. Only to collect more dust and get grosser. So yeah, if you guys have anything that you want to know, my hands are disgusting now. Oh God. I'm just gonna just try to get some some of this stuff off with some sanitizer. Definitely need to sanitize after that. Yeah, bring on part two, everyone. Maybe we'll go into a little bit more detail of some of this stuff. Maybe I'll I'll put up like a post up on my Facebook group or something, and just ask you guys what specifically you want me to go over. All right, real quick. And do 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 do. And uh, yeah, I definitely do not throw anything away, Michelle. <laughs> uh, let's see. I might vape some stuff next time. I, I think that's what we should do for part two is actually vape some of the old school vape gear. So we're, we're gonna kind of do a little bit more show and tell and then vape some of the old stuff from from this video. What do you think about that? Uh, Magna RDAs? No, don't remember that one. Uh, I want the Russian. You will not get the Russian. That's going in my collection. All of this stuff is going to be sealed in, in Lucite and just put up on a shelf sometime. Uh, oof, I don't know, man. I really don't know. I, Rig Mod was my first, like, proper mod. That, that Rig Mod right there was a gift from my boss. So don't think I can give away the black one or the, uh, the other one, the nickel-plated one, because the box for the nickel-plated one is signed by James, who is now unfortunately passed away. So they just mean too much to me. Honestly, all this stuff just means so much to me because it just reminds me of where I came from. Um, and I know I've gone over my hour here, so we're going to wrap this up. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for the part two. Not only that, but also for the... Um, Post up in the Daily Vape TV Cloud Crew group on Facebook. Please join if you haven't already. It's right down there in the description below. And just answer the questions. Please do me a favor and answer the questions. It's all I ask of you. <sighs> but yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, thank you so much to everyone that tuned in and for the super chat from Seamus. Appreciate it, buddy. We will do another video at some point, probably next week. This week has been pretty exhausting after the live streams for the Vaping misfit, Misfits, which were very successful. So far, we've raised over 3,000 pounds for the various charities that they're giving that money to, which is great. We hit 1,000% of their goal, which is insane, but yeah. Um, anything else before I go? Savs, uh, well, first we'll do the vape stew. Well, okay. That's what she said is tonight. Tomorrow, it's the green room on Frames Jenklin's channel. Uh, okay. Blah, 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 blah. That's what she said tonight on Ruby Roo's channel. Um, tomorrow is the green room on James Franklin, or Frames Jenklin Vapor's channel. And then immediately after, we have the vape stew. And we have a special guest on. Um, on Saturday, I know there's a bunch of shows on Saturday, can't remember them all. And on Sunday, Savs. I'm talking about ones that I'll be on. Savs, 100th episode, definitely happening this Sunday, I swear. We're going to do it, and it's going to be lots of guests and lots of fun times will be had by all. And then after that, it's uh, there. there's another stream for the Vaping Misfits. So they're, they're doing their show on Sunday nights now. So stay tuned after Savs. But that's pretty much catching up with me. That's all you really you know, need to know about what's going on with me. I'm going to enjoy my new, my new little pod system here. What is it called? The Vapresso Extra. There we go. 
Um, so yeah, Grim, Grim Green's vlog is in 10 minutes. Stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Make sure you check out all the links in my description, Patreon, and all that good stuff. Check out my Twitch channel as well, twitch.tv slash slightly buzzed. I, I usually play games on there uh, when I feel like it. And Jenny says, huge SNVA show on Saturday. There you go. There's a show to watch on Saturday for all you people out there. Uh, and Steve Nichols, yes, you were very late. We were about to close it out. So <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. And as always... Vape on.